Hey guys, today we have something a bit less gamery and a bit more work focused with the biggest buzzword that there is right now, AI. Say hello to the HiDoc H1. This isn't just any old dock, it's packed with top-notch ports, plus has a speaker and headset combo going on. But there is a kicker. It comes with a ChatGPT transcription service. Honestly, it's pretty cool, so stick around as I dissect these features and go over the reasons why it's earned a spot on my desk. Let's dive right in and see what it's all about. First, let me address the elephant in the room. The High Dock H1 isn't what you'd call a budget-friendly dock. Sure, it's loaded with modern features like dual power delivery ports and 2.5 gigabit network port. But if we're just talking docks, the price might make you pause. The good news is there is more to the High Dock than meets the eye. The star of the show with the High Dock H1 has to be its ChatGPT integration with a two-way sound processing, which is total win for handling meetings. Yes, you could technically record your meetings, rig up your own ChatGPT setup to transcribe and spit out similar results. But with this device, it's all integrated, so there's less work to do. Before diving into the details, let's get a feel for the device itself, which will make things a bit clearer. The High Dock H1 is essentially made up of four key components. First, there is the main dock unit, which is decked out with a variety of buttons and dials, and it has two speakers with passive radiators tucked underneath to get that extra oomph in sound. Then there's the neat attachment that houses the wireless earpiece. This isn't your typical in ear bud, it's an over ear wireless headset designed to fit comfortably on either left or right ear. But having said that, I really wish you could use your own Bluetooth headphones with it. I prefer blocking out the background noise during meetings to focus solely on the person I'm speaking with. At the moment, it seems like there is no support for external Bluetooth devices, well, at least just yet. Rounding out the setup is the 150 watt power supply brick, which not only juices up the dock, but can also power your laptop and if needed, your phone or any other gadgets on your desk. I appreciate that the power brick itself is designed to be slim and wide, making it easier to stuck away under the desk, though that might just be a personal preference. The dock itself can dish out up to 118 watts through its two power delivery ports, the main Type-C port offering 100 watt power delivery charging and serving as the upstream port. Additionally, there is another Type-C port on the side that not only supports 18 watts power delivery charging but also boasts a 10 gigabit data transfer speed adding a nice touch of versatility to the mix turning our attention to the back of unit you'll find three more usb ports awaiting your peripherals there's a type c port with 10 gigabit capability and two type a ports with the first supporting 10 gigabits and the second 5 gigabits. Right along these, there are two HDMI ports capable of delivering 4K video at 60 Hz, complemented by the high-speed 2.5 gigabit network port we mentioned earlier. On the left-hand side, there's Bluetooth 5.2 sync button, as well as version 4 dual SD card reader. It supports both micro and standard size, and is running at high speed. I tried these ports, and they're definitely fast, and you can use them at the same time if you wish to as the total bandwidth between the USBs and SD cards is 10 gigabits, which matches the cable connecting to your PC, so you'll have no problem there. This dock takes more of a thoughtful approach than just cramming as many ports as possible. The selection is practical, focusing what generally is useful, like the easily accessible SD card reader and side port for charging or data transfers for your phone. Moving on to the front, there is a neat setup with the four buttons, a slider and a clickable scroll wheel. The scroll wheel is a nifty feature for adjusting volume of your connected device, and a quick click turns it into a play pause button. You also get the standard buttons for answering and ending calls and muting the microphone. My only nitpick, I wish the mute button was click free for smoother experience and less chance of anyone on the other side hearing the click. If for some reason the noise reduction doesn't work. The high dock also includes a feature called high dock key, Press and hold it for one and a half seconds to start and unstop recording. A quick tap during recording drops a bookmark. It's handy for highlighting important points or setting reminders. Another notable feature is the red slider, which adjusts noise reduction. However, it's unique because it reduces background noise from the person you're talking to, nor your own environment, as that is already done with the AI noise reduction. This is useful if the other person is in a noisy place, but it might slightly lower their voice volume. While testing this out, I found it's quite helpful, though it does have its limits. Welcome to High Dock Bidirectional Noise Cancellation Demo. In this demo, we will play audio with various background noises. By moving the red slider up and down, you can experience the noise reduction performance. 
During the demo, you can exit by pressing the hang up call button at any time. I ran into a few issues when switching the dock between different devices. Occasionally, it just wouldn't connect. A simple workaround was to unplug and replug the power cable, which resolves some of the issues. It appears to be a compatibility problem, as performance can vary significantly depending on the device or even the specific port used on that device. For instance, my Dell XPS laptop connects flawlessly with the dock, supporting screens, devices, and power through one cable, which is fantastic. In contrast, my Asus Zephyrus G14 shows various results. On the right-hand side, the USB-C port handles display and dock features well, but doesn't manage power delivery. But that is a limitation of the, this particular port. On the left-hand side, the port is intended to have also power delivery, as well as the rest but it seems to only support USB 2.0 functionality and speeds of about 35 megabytes per second. I've discussed this issue with HiDoc, who acknowledged their challenges with USB Type-C compatibility, and they are addressing them through firmware updates. This highlights a significant caveat for potential bias of any dock. I do want to give HiDoc team some credit. Since I got the device, there have been numerous of firmware updates, which include fixes and improvements. If you're curious to get some more insights into the device, and user feedback, I really recommend checking out their release notes or updates and comments on Kickstarter page. One example is the E1 wireless headset. It's a bit of a mixed bag, especially for someone wearing glasses. I found it was somewhat uncomfortable and trying to put it on during the meeting could be a bit awkward. Occasionally, E1 could not detect if it's on my ear, causing sound to emit from both the dock and the headset at the same time, which isn't ideal for privacy. However, the team has introduced a double-click feature to manually switch the audio to E1, improving usability and comfort for the glass wearers like myself. Now let's get into the recording capabilities of the HiDoc H1. What's the functionality and what can we do with it? To use it, set it as the audio device in your meeting software. During the meeting, press the function button on either H1 or E1 to start recording, indicating by the H1 wheel turning blue. Press again to stop and the light will turn off. Recordings are stored locally on a dock. To access, visit the High Notes webpage, select the dock, and choose to upload if it's not set to auto upload. The page will display your recording, transcript, and summary depending on your subscription. Purchasers of H1 will receive lifetime free transcription service, although advanced features like multiple speaker identification and AI summary will require High Notes quota purchase. The High Notes quota offers two pricing options. $12.90 for the 1200 minutes and $119.90 for the 12,000 minutes. While this is not mandatory, I feel this is where the main value add is for the way that they process the transcript. If you follow good recording hygiene and tag everyone on the meeting correctly, it will even provide you with meeting outlines, main talking points, action items, as well as key information. Ideal for sharing or reducing the need to type during meetings. With this tool, I feel that I can focus more on the discussion and less on note taking, increasing my contribution to the conversation. It also allows for the recording and processing outside of the web meetings, useful for the in-person meetings or taking notes on the fly. Keep in mind, while highly accurate, this tool isn't flawless. It may misattribute speech or misunderstand accents or terminology, but corrections can be made within the system for future accuracy. Since most of the improvements are software based, I expect this performance will only improve over time. I really like the phrase about AI. Today, it is performing the worst it will ever be. And I'm really happy with what I have right now, so the future must be even better. Let's talk about one of these things. Currently, when using multiple speaker identification with Pro Subscription, the system lists speakers, but you must manually rename them to track who is who. Sometimes you need to merge recordings if it misidentifies the same person as different speakers. This currently applies to each session, requiring frequent adjustments. However, HiDoc plans to enhance this with speaker memory, allowing you to identify speakers once and have the system recognize them in the future recordings. This is a small upgrade that could significantly streamline the process. One of the things you can do with High Notes is upload your own recording to both transcribed and then do AI processing, which made me kick myself. I recently upgraded to Samsung S24 Ultra, and a big part of that was the ability to record meetings, transcribe, and summarize. While it is great for personal recaps, the inconsistency makes it less reliable for sharing. However, uploading the same files to high notes significantly improves accuracy, and I feel I could give that summary to someone else without too much worry, which is a huge plus. So what's my take on HiDoc H1? Honestly, it has made my meetings a lot more manageable. It's like having an extra set of hands on deck, keeping mostly neat notes with ability to go back and check through the transcript. 
Its integration with ChatGPT and robust connectivity options make it uniquely suitable for business environment, despite its higher price point and some device compatibility issues. There is one more thing to really bear in mind, and that is privacy. Ultimately, you have this device listening to your conversations, saving the data and then sending it off to transcribe and summarize. There is certainly a risk here. HiDoc does have their security and privacy policy, but there is no way that we can test and confirm how they do their processes or how secure it is. I did, however, confirm with them about deleting your data. They have ability to delete everything from their accounts, which will be done immediately. And there is an option to delete individual recordings. Once you select recording to be deleted, this will wipe local files immediately, but the data in their cloud will be deleted within a month as per their sync process, which is worth keeping in mind. As a fairly new product, it does have some bumps to even out. However, if they keep continuous firmware improvements and supporting their users, I see this as an overall great product. If you are a professional looking to streamline your workspace, I can see this dog can justify the expense. Thanks for watching. If you think that HiDoc H1 might be what your desk needs, check out the links below for more details. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one.